How do you like that? That's my friend Lou Scharf playing a gorgeous Concert Grand Steinway right here in downtown Alabama. And this is this is the Model D, right? Model D. Model D, nine foot, you know, the whole, the, the, the real deal. Um, and what we want to talk about today is how to best record one of these. We've been working with this one for a while and have come up with a few things that we think make it sound pretty good, but we've struggled to get here. And we'll share what we've learned so far. Okay, the first thing we'll talk about is underneath. We put some carpet under here to help tone down the room. This, this is an old uh, elementary school auditorium, well, maybe even high school at one time, auditorium, and it was built in the 30s, and it's cavernous, and it has hard tile, I mean, hard plaster walls and so forth and so on. So it's really live. And we tamed it a little bit by putting the carpet under here, which absorbs a huge portion of the sound coming from the instrument because the bottom of the soundboard is open, and so a ton of energy re resonates out of the bottom of a piano, not just out of the top. So that made a huge difference. It really did. So you might keep that in mind. On the other hand, if you're in a really dead place, you can put something very hard under the piano to create a more brilliant um, sound. I noticed... Uh, um, Who's our favorite jazz pianist today? Uh, Talk about Oscar Peterson? No, not Oscar Peterson, but... <laughs> B.G. Adair? No, B.G. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I can't, we, we were watching... Uh, uh, Dick Hyman, Dick Hyman, and he was playing somewhere, and they had put uh, uh, wood, hard wood down under there because I think it was carpeted where he was playing, and it, it was just sucked up the sound, and so in that case, they needed to turn it around the other way. In this case, we need to suck up some of the excess sound. Okay, enough about the acoustical treatment. The, um, the microphone setup is as follows. Back here at the back of the piano, we have two omnidirectional mics that are spaced 60 centimeters apart, a traditional AB stereo split, kind of wide, but sounds good to us, two feet from the back of the piano. Now, if you haven't tried that before and you're trying to record a piano, give it a try. It really works. I've been seeing this a lot on classical programs of piano music, and they often put the mics at the foot of the piano. It really works. Uh, and as opposed to having it right here in the curve, where we kind of traditionally do, put a couple of mics here, stereo pair, some sort, and yeah, that works. That's fine. And it's better than putting it out in the auditorium or holding up a cell phone, but it, it really works well to have it down at the foot. And then there's this mic. What we have here is a pair of cardioid mics. Again, they're octavas. And uh, this is, again, the MK012, but with cardioid capsules. Capsules. And um, they are set up in what is called an ORTF configuration. You're probably familiar with it. They're 17 centimeters apart, 110 degree angle between, between the mics. And uh, just FYI, I'll show you another picture right now, which you can see it a little bit better, but I used a... Uh, shock mount on one and a standard mount on the other in order to get them one above the other on this little stereo bar. And that, that worked out quite well. Now, let's talk about orientation. Normally, you stand behind the microphones and the one on the right is the right channel, the one on the left is the left channel because that's how it's going to come back to you in the speaker system. However, with a piano, we've got this right mic pointing dead center of the bass strings. And the left mic is pointed right here in the middle of the treble. So what we're going to do is reverse that. This will be our left channel, and this will be our right channel, because from your vantage point there, like Lou, you, you know, the pianist has the bass on the left and the treble on the right. So... We're doing that same thing down here. The right-hand microphone from the rear is actually going to be the left channel. So all the bass on the left, all the treble 
on the right. And oh, distance. It's 24 inches from the mics to the back edge of the keyboard and 10 inches from the mics to the strings. And as I said, it's about as dead center over the piano, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. Right over the center, right over the, the trademark, <laughs> the logo on the, on the keyboard cover. So that's what you want to do there. And, um, and so that's, and let me just say this, that we tried, oh, what do you reckon? 15 different setups, 12 setups, something. And moving mics all over the place, lids closed, lids half stick, lids up, music folder, you know, everything. We just moved everything we could, moved it around on the stage. And finally, this combination with a carpet, uh, some close-up mics, some more distant mics, seemed to do the trick. And down there on the edge of the stage, you can see a lone cardioid microphone that is pointing out into the auditorium. And uh, this is another Octava. It's a cardioid facing the auditorium. And it's again the MK12 with the large diaphragm cardioid capsule. And that is our room microphone. The recorder we used is the marvelous little relatively new Zoom F8, an eight track recorder. We used six of those tracks to capture the music and the narration. And we set everything to peak at minus six dB. All the preamps we used were the actual built-in preamps in the Zoom F8. Later, when we mix them, we'll have 50%, or I'm sorry, I won't say that, we'll have uh, equal amounts of this pair and this pair, and a very tiny amount of the room mic, surprisingly. It's about 40 dB below these, and yet it makes a difference. Uh, again, this is something you'll experiment with and do it by ear. Uh, if your room is deader than this one, then you'll need, you'll need a lot more room mic. But let me give you an idea of how live this room, I'll just use this mic right here. And I'll talk to you and you'll see that this is a very live room. Yes, it is. So <laughs> anyway, enough talking now. Let's get back to some playing so you can hear them. Now, what I'd like to do is have Lou play a gorgeous arrangement that he did of God Bless America. And wow, you know, could, could, could anything be more appropriate right now than, than that? So, uh, I, I, and, and this is the day before election, so I have no idea what's going to happen, but all I know is that, you know, we need God bless America big time, uh, no matter what. So, anyway, uh, Lou's going to play, and I'm going to start out, and I'll identify it on the screen with these, and then at some point we'll go to these, and then we'll do both pairs together equally and then we'll add in some room mic and you'll you'll hear the difference I think so I get out of the way and let you do it
that's good. <laughs> that was really good. Did you just make it up? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> just a minute. Ago. Just make it. Just a minute ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When'd you write that? <laughs> just now, man. Uh, okay. That's Lou Sharf playing God Bless America. I hope you liked it. I, I, I'm sure you did. Um, and I hope you like our recording setup. And um, tell you what. Thank you for watching, and rather than just cutting off, we'll end it with Lou playing. How about that? And thanks very much for watching. Let's turn everything off. Hit the Go Pro. Oh, I didn't turn it on. No, I did. <laughs> <laughs>